as the UK regulator for health and safety, our focus is very much upon those issues related to uh, harm caused to people's health caused by work. So we will very much look at the issue from the perspective of what are the main causes of harm in any particular sector. It will be different for different sectors. And it's really about those things in the workplace that, crea that create damage to people's health and well-being, whether that be exposure to harmful substances, for example, like asbestos in, in some sectors, uh, or silica in a construction industry, or in, in other sectors where those issues are not perhaps so prevalent, like the health sector or the education sector, we will be more interested in assessing the extent to which stress is a problem. And indeed, we provide different tools for those industry sectors to use. We've generated a whole series of stress management standards, which are very widely used in those industries where it's a big issue. Our regulatory interventions uh, vary quite considerably depending upon the culture we encounter in the industry, in, in an in, in a company or in a sector. Uh, it's not always about checking for compliance. In fact, the notion of compliance is something that, that really does not sit well with the way that we regulate. Our regulatory system is very much based upon our businesses achieving the right outcomes. So we will look for evidence that those outcomes are being achieved. So our questions will be much more around show me what you are doing to address this issue rather than going in to check that they are in compliance with some particular standard. The way in which you tackle health and well-being, I think, is, is very much around uh, doing the right thing depending on where you find yourself. The best strategy by far is clearly the proactive one that seeks to create a healthy workplace where work is designed to be good for people. So the extent to which you do that, by far that is the best because it is the preventive strategy. It then eliminates the need for, for the other activities that you have to put in place because if, if you are in, the, in a place where people are not finding work healthy, it is doing them harm, that's when you have to get into the mode of addressing those issues around how do you get them back to work, how do you eliminate the problems that are causing their, their time off work or, their, or their, their lack of productivity because of the way work is designed. So just as with any other aspect of health and safety, designing it in in the first place is by far the best strategy. For me, the most important aspect of health and well-being in any workplace, in any sector, is to be treated as an individual. I think if uh, managers and supervisors recognise that people are, are all individuals uh, and they all value being treated as such, which is simple things like ask, asking people how they are, and genuinely wanting to hear the response and wanting to know whether there is a problem and how can they be helped to fix it. Um, actually showing people that you really care about them is probably the most powerful thing you can do in any workplace. Um, in addition to that, I think there are, there are a number of ways in which you can support that with programs of uh, exercise, uh, encouraging people uh, to eat well, uh, and to eat at the right times. All of those things are supportive strategies. But the most important thing is none of these things can be done on a one-off basis. If you're going to do them, they have to be sustained because people will become very disillusioned if something is offered and it's not sustained. So it really is about making this part of the culture. I think the best example 
that we have seen in, in a single project was very much in the Olympic project where we, we constructed and built uh, the Olympic Games in, and staged the Olympic Games in 2012, as well as achieving an absolutely remarkable safety record with not a single person killed. There is clear evidence that the work that was put into t paying attention to health and well-being of the workforce throughout that activity yielded a real financial and productivity benefit. In the Olympic project, there are a number of examples I can quote of, of activities that really led to improvement in people's health. The first, interestingly enough, was that everybody who was employed on that site as a contractor was, uh, was subjected to a medical before they could work on the site. But what was interesting about that medical examination was that those who failed the medical were not simply told they could not work on the site. Those that were found to have a problem that was fixable, whether that was high blood pressure or uh, an eyesight defect that they had never previously been aware of, um, the, the system at the Olympics was that they were told to go away, go to their own doctor or to an optician to get the, the problem treated. And if they came back within a month and had could demonstrate that they had addressed their health problem, the job would still be there for them. So that created a real incentive for people to address their own health issues and, and to go away and get it fixed with a job waiting for them if, the, if they did that. For people who worked on the site, it was clear that there was, that in, in many construction projects, you can see that a lot of incidents happen to people around about the, the end of the morning shift before they, t they go for lunch. There was clear evidence that that was a risk in people who do physical manual work on a construction site. So a very simple mechanism that they used on that site was to offer people breakfast and to insist that people ate breakfast every morning as part of doing the job. And there was a measurable difference, not just in terms of people being at risk of getting hurt later in the morning, but also clear evidence of a, of a disappearance of that productivity gap that came around because people were much more attentive and much more able to stay focused on the job. I think it's hugely important for people to see uh, work as being good for, for people and to make work as good as it can be for people um, because that way you improve productivity, you reduce absenteeism uh, and also I think it is clear that the more that people feel well at work and feel that work is good for them they will they will be less likely to have safety incidents. So there is a very strong link between health and safety in workplaces. People under stress, people who are not feeling well are much more likely to be hurt in the workplace. So the two things go together. Mm -hmm.